Stuart Build, and we are live from London. Up today. Woo! Today, we are speaking with the fabulous telly presenter, style icon, and now cookbook author, Laura Jackson. Give it up for Laura Jackson. Anybody watching on Facebook, now is a good time to tell you that if you would like to leave a question for Laura, please just pop it in the comments box below. You can also send us any questions for Laura on Twitter at buildseriesldn. Cool. So, Laura, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Everything, she's got a little bit rained on the way here. What a yeah. soldier, but here we are. Yeah. Frizzy hair, frizzy hair. <laughs> Looks great. Not good. Looks great. So, Laura, if before I just start um, kind of bulldozing in with the questions today, mm -hmm. we're going to start by talking about your debut cookbook, which is Round to Ours, which you've created in collaboration with the lovely Alice Levine. Yes, I have. Yes, you have. So how's all that been going? It's been going really well. So the book came out um, at the end of May, um, which was really strange to have written a book and then to kind of see it in print in like tangible form but it was really exciting it's kind of nice that i don't know you, you've got something that you've written that will last forever there it is there it is looking <laughs> a bit like we're on the cover of a laura ashley campaign um uh, but um yeah it was it was really exciting to write it was great because we got a place for all of our ideas um it's food and entertaining so it's uh, everything that we really love and we um uh, it's kind of about our supper club, which is um, under the same name, Jackson and Levine. And of course, the book's all about capturing that sort of fun, intimate vibe that your supper clubs are so known for. Mm. And do you think that's what makes the book different to kind of other books that might be out there at the minute? Yeah, I think the USP is the fact that it is about entertaining and it's about supper clubs and it's about having people around for dinner and making it as easy as possible because, let's be honest, we all get really stressed when we've got people coming around for dinner. Mm -hmm. I definitely do. Um, so it's just kind of giving you those tools to help you know, facilitate an evening that's a little bit easier. Um, so the first half of the book is kind of about style. So we've mm -hmm. got um, the mood, which is how to create ambiance and a great mood when people are coming over. Um, the larder, which is all little kind of tricks to have in your store cupboard to make things um, kind of elevate like normal things like potatoes for instance um, we've got like great ideas like pistachio oils and almond oils um, yeah. and then the table which is all about dressing so where to source incredible things from um, linen glassware which is a favorite of Alice and I's and then we kind of go into um, the cooking part which mm -hmm. is divided into brunch lunch and dinner but it's all in menus because lots of people come to us and they say um, I've got four people coming around on Thursday night for dinner. I have no idea what to cook. I want to do a starter main and dessert, but I, I want to make it as easy as possible. So we kind of, we listened to what our friends were asking us. We listened to what people on kind of Twitter and social media were asking from us. And we kind of uh, thought a menu book was kind of right for us. You know, if you want like the perfect chocolate cake, you would go to Nigella. Or if you want the perfect vegetarian curry, you'd go to Anna Jones. But I think for entertaining, people came to Jackson Levine. So that's what we've written our book about. What's your favorite menu in the book? Oh, it's so hard. Um, I think eight to late, which is kind of a Friday night dinner with friends. Um, it's got a great ice cream in there. It takes a little bit more work. We've got kind of easier menus and then ones that are a little bit more difficult, but I quite like having a Saturday off and cooking all day. There's something really therapeutic about having the radio on, getting ready. Um, and that eight to late requires a little bit, a little bit more work, but I think it's worth it. And the Times gave you a very lovely compliment in which they described your book as an instruction manual for a generation. What a nice thing to say. Oh, we did not pay for that quote either. <laughs> absolutely original. Um, yeah, that was really kind. Um, he said that, you know, Jamie Oliver's in 1999 was, was, was his book of the year. And he said that our book was the book of this year, which is great. I think we are speaking to a really wide range of people. And I think that not just in London and not just in England, kind of across the globe, because Everybody likes having people around for dinner. Mm -hmm. And we all want to impress our friends, but we all don't want to spend hours and hours in the kitchen. Um, so I really do think there's something for everybody. So why do you think this has sort of struck such a chord at this moment in time? Do you think there's anything different about the way we're kind of eating and entertaining at the minute, which lends itself to your more sort of, you know, eclectic, more fun, rather than starched linen? and? Yeah, I think um, when we first started the supper club, 
um, the kind of um, like deliciously Ella and um, honestly healthy, they were kind of really booming and people were kind of going down that healthy, mm. healthy food route. And Alice and I were just cooking honest, normal food mm -hmm. at my house and entertaining people. So we were, we were kind of, we kind of started in the food world where things weren't in our favor but as things have kind of changed and evolved it's all been about home cooking inviting people around for dinner about having a bit of fun and i think that we kind of uh, it's done a kind of a bit of a, a 180 hasn't it and kind of now we're into this home cooked food like honest food which is really great but i think i don't know uh, i think supper clubs in the last few years have kind of really boomed mm. I still, I'm really unsure how to define a supper club. We both <laughs> are. Um, but I think just you know, saving money, you can eat quite cheaply at home. You can do really amazing things if you source kind of seasonally and local ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, and we all love a bargain. I especially love a bargain. Um, so yeah, I think everything's kind of just fallen into place. And how would you encourage people who aren't experts at cooking or a little bit trepidatious, a little bit scared, how would you encourage them just to have a crack? I would say never cook something that you've not cooked before if you're having mm. people around for dinner. You know when you get those people who try experimenting and it turns out like that Friends episode <laughs> where <laughs> Joey cooks like half a trifle and half a shepherd's pie, <laughs> not good. So do, some, do something that you've cooked before and that you kind of feel confident cooking mm -hmm. and then you can maybe add a twist. So say even if it is like a lasagna, then I don't know, maybe do something with the sage leaves or something that's in mm -hmm. season with your lasagna. So just add a little twist. Um, and kind of if you're if your family are Greek or if your family are French, maybe go with something that's authentic to you as well, rather than trying something that's kind of, that you cook every, you know, just be adventurous, yeah. but not too adventurous. <laughs> um, and I always think just going to the butcher and asking him or the fishmonger or going mm. to your local vegetable shop and saying, what's in season? What do you recommend? Um, going to the, if you go to the butcher, if you are a bit strapped for cash and you didn't want to buy lamb cutlets, then you could buy lamb neck, but ask the butcher, what could I do with this lamb neck? How could I cook it? What would you recommend? And yep. get tips from where you're buying it from. Mm -hmm. um, and I always just love to do a bit of research. So I spend hours on the internet looking at menus or reading cookbooks cover to cover. So I think that's always good for a bit of inspo as well. Definitely. So why do you think you and Alice work so well together? You've got such a nice dynamic and obviously you're good friends, but why do you think you work professionally well together? Um, it's so hard, isn't it, starting a business with your friend? I don't know if anybody has got a business with their friend, but um, it's it is really fun and we have a really great time, but we bring completely different things to the table, which is great. Um, we are so different in so many ways and see the world in, uh, very differently, but we also so similar. We like the same things. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I'll send something to Alice going, oh my God, have you seen this? She's like, oh my God, I was just about to send it to you. Oh. Um, so we kind of, we really complement each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm a bit, crazy like mm -hmm. i'm the person that's running around like picking bits and pieces like grabbing glassware grabbing <laughs> linen and alice is kind of more level-headed and said no this is what we should do with it so she kind of brings me down and i kind of bring her up which is yeah. great not bring her up because she's very excited as well um, <laughs> but um yeah we we work really well together and it's so nice working with your friend and you met wearing bum bags at a jumble sale we did tell me about that I do not still have that bum bag, by the way, which I wish I did. Shame. Um, we <laughs> were working um, for um, Oxfam doing um, Rumble in the Jumble, which is mm. um, run by our friend Gemma Kenny. And we had rival stores opposite each other. <sighs> Alice was selling clothes, I was selling clothes. But we ended up kind of just, you know when you meet someone in, in, in life when mm. you're a bit older and you have that thing where you're like, I really want to be friends with you. And mm -hmm. it's so different when you're younger and at school. But I think in my adult life, I've really found myself having really strong connections with people and yeah. I, I met Alice and I was instantly like I really like you mm -hmm. and you're really funny and you're really smart and I mm -hmm. need you to be my friend um so we kind of were trading clothes and and then we were like shall we go for lunch together and we went for lunch together and we were talking about food and we found that that was a real common interest between us both mm -hmm. um and then we started kind of emailing each other new openings and restaurants and lunch deals and um and we just found that all of our time together we talked about food, <laughs> ate food, cooked for each other. So I think we just decided to start something that we were both really passionate about, which mm -hmm. was completely different to our television careers. Yep. But as kind of times evolved and what's happened in food and what's happened in the industry, they've kind of overlapped, which has kind of been perfect. 
And I want your feelings on the makings of a good dinner party. Okay, so let's start with the guests. Who, what type of people do we want to invite and who are we avoiding? Um, I wouldn't say avoid anyone, but um, I think it's nice to bring your sociable friends together. Mm -hmm. I'm actually having um, people around for dinner on next, on not on this Friday, next Friday. Mm -hmm. And I think that I've like, I've gone, okay, so who do I know will get on but haven't yet met each other? Yeah. I think that's important. Who, it's kind of a bit like putting together Coronation Street, so <laughs> who's got each role <laughs> at the dinner party? But you want kind of fun friends, chatty friends. It's always great to bring people who you know will bring a nice bottle of wine. Indeed. I've got those friends who go to Tesco's, get a little Gallo bottle or whatever's in the sale and take the label off and then give me a, a warm bottle of red and I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, uh, um, I think, yeah, it's just about getting people that are, are fun and mm -hmm. adventurous. Because if you're going to cook something and people don't know what it is, you want them to be able to kind of tuck in. Embrace um, it. I think always um, welcome people with a drink when they arrive, take their coats, make them feel welcome. There's nothing worse than going around to somebody's house and then feeling like they don't really want you there. We've all been there. You know, when someone's really stressed in the kitchen, they really kind of want you to be there, but not really, because they're really yeah. stressed about the cooking. Um, and always cook something, I think, that's easy if you're cooking for a lot of people. Yeah. No, like, no mammoth, like, tapas Spanish night for, like, 15 people, <laughs> that is a definite no-no. Because you don't want to spend all your time in the kitchen. Don't forget, everybody that's come round for dinner has come to see you. Mm -hmm. I think if you're in the kitchen all night getting really stressed, you, your guests are kind of missing out on, on, on having a night with you. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, leave the washing up to the morning. That's what I always do. <laughs> and, and then hope that your boyfriend does it while you're still in bed asleep. <laughs> that's a good shout, <laughs> I like it. So we recently did um, an interview for our new sustainable living site, which was launched today called Sourced by HuffPost. You can find it at source.huffingtonpost.co.uk. Um, Laura, can you tell us a bit about the foraging and grow your own you've been kind of like dabbling with? I know you make your own rhubarb vodka. I do. Rhubarb Water vodka, me. rhubarb gin. I have a massive rhubarb plant in my garden. I bought a house a year ago and the woman really, really loved her garden. I've got lemon verbena and sage and gooseberries, mm -hmm. raspberries, rhubarb, Lovely. Um, mint. So I've been really lucky. I've inherited this incredible garden, which I'm desperately trying to keep alive. <laughs> um, so thank heavens it rained today because that saved me a job. Um, but Alice's um, mum has got the most beautiful vegetable patch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not really a patch. It's like an incredible garden. Mm -hmm. um, so she's always really been into kind of growing your own and foraging and bits and pieces. So we did quite a bit of foraging for the book. Mm -hmm. um, and we made this incredible pineapple weed cordial, which pineapple weed is... It's, it's a weed and it mm. tastes a little bit like those pineapple cubes that you've got and chamomile. It's incredible. We made um, a really lovely granita out of it. Um, so we've got a bit of foraging in the book. But I think it's just something that in, 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 in London, you don't, if you live in the city, you mm -hmm. kind of think, oh, I just want to get out to some green open spaces and kind of use what's available to me. Mm -hmm. So in November, we'll always go kind of slow picking and make slow gin and vodka for, um, for Christmas, which is great. Mm -hmm. but, um, it's really, I don't know, you always have to ask permission. Don't go foraging in next door's neighbour, in next door's, in your next door neighbour's garden. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just a really, it's a nice thing to do. And so obviously your kind of like main gig is your TV presenting. So mm -hmm. I wanted to speak with you about that a little bit. So you got your start presenting on uh, Freshly Squeezed. So yes. um, how did that come about? You were working at Shoreditch House? What I was on the door. Go on, what? What happened? Yep. Um, I was working on the door at Shoreditch House mm -hmm. and um, I met this really... Um, lovely man and I said to him oh I'd really like to get into TV presenting mm. I'd kind of you know when you're at uni you do kind of projects and bits and pieces and things like that so I'd kind of done a few bits to camera and mm -hmm. you know small things like that and um, he said well kind of what experience have you got and I was like well I said, <laughs> uh, uh, mm. and then it just went really quiet <laughs> um, and he put me in touch with a friend of his who was an agent mm -hmm. And um, I went to have a meeting with her and she was like, oh, it's great, you want to be a TV presenter, but you haven't really done anything. Mm -hmm. So she sent me for a screen test, which is an, an, an audition um, with other people um, uh, for a job that was for a music show. And I ended up getting the job. Mm -hmm. She didn't really have a choice. She had to take me on. <laughs> um, it sounds like a really easy story, like it all just happened overnight. It didn't. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of how I got into it. And then I've kind of been doing bits and pieces ever since. 
And you've got such a kind of diverse mix of the stuff you've done. You're, of course, doing Take Me Out the Gossip yeah. right now. You've done Behind the Scenes of Britain's Got Talent. Mm. You've also done World's Most Talented, which saw you attempt gymnastics in Romania, numerical memory in Japan, and snake charming in Malaysia. No. Yeah. That <laughs> so, was <laughs> such a wonderful job. I got to meet a real varied mix of people from all over the world so basically mm. the premise of the show was uh i was in one country and my co-presenter was in another country and we we're having like a country off which country <laughs> had the most talented people and um when i was in japan i think he was in india um so i met three incredibly talented people and he met three incredibly talented mm -hmm. people and then it went to a jury for them to decide who they thought was the most talented person and whoever was from that country the country won um but yeah i mean i met this guy in japan that you could just literally shout numbers at him and then he would memorize them and then add them all up I mean, I'm, I could barely <laughs> add two plus two, so I was very, very <laughs> amazed. And I went to Romania. I just went to some really undiscovered parts of the world that mm. you would never normally visit on holiday or you'd never get the opportunity to go, so I was really grateful. Mm -hmm. And the people were so welcoming. We went to um, this wonderful girl's house in um, Romania and her family made the most delicious meal. And they made their own... I, oh, well, it wasn't really vodka, it was just really strong alcohol and they kept trying <laughs> to make me drink it and I was like the thing is I have to work and remember my lines I really can't I think <laughs> they were get, trying to get all the all the crew drinking their own brand uh, alcohol but yeah it's just it was just it was a really 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 fun job and you and Mark Wright on Take Me Out the Gossip, he seemed to be pals. Yeah. yeah. What's, it like, what's he like to work with? He's great. He, he really is great. We have such a laugh. He's like my brother. Yeah. And we get to go to Tenerife for three weeks and we film the show in this villa. And it is raucous, as you can imagine. Not quite Love Island raucous. <laughs> um, uh, we'll leave that to them. But it's just, it's, it's just really interesting seeing how people converse with each other and mm. about relationships. Like, I really love people. Um, so every morning when we wake up we're literally saying to all of the team what happened who's kissing who who's going out with who who's swapping partners with who um we and mark always laugh we say we could do a spin-off of the spin-off that we do because when they get back to london and they're all on a whatsapp group they're all texting each other it gets a little bit um naughty shall we say Ooh. um yeah it's just great and he's just a fantastic person and i really love mm. working with him and he's he's really funny i don't know if that comes across sometimes but he's he is <laughs> <laughs> he is really funny. He makes me laugh a lot. Yeah. And so, obviously, there's some amazing telly on UK screens at the minute. Yeah. If you could present anything, what would you pick? I love a good... Um, I love, like, a kind of talenty kind of contesty thing with I love sure. people basically so street mate has always been like my absolute just because that was so much fun like Davina was brilliant at that I love the thought of just kind of running around and getting people together mm -hmm. I love kind of dating shows um and I love Strictly I'm yes. such a big Claudia fan she's really brilliant um and I just I love watching it as well I, I, I'm sure you all do but um just like week by week just seeing people progress who've never danced before mm -hmm. like it's mes I think it's mesmerizing watching people dance like I get really into it but to the point where you know, when you're watching telly and someone's trying to talk to you and you're just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just need to watch the telly. So I'd love to present that. That would be, that would be, that would be dream job. Would you go on it? Oh, I, I think I'd be really terrible. I mean, I'd love <laughs> to. I definitely, I think that, I think I might have two left feet. Um, yeah, I mean, I I'd love to. I want to see you try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, hopefully I'd progress. I don't want to be that person in week eight is still dancing like week one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so moving on to obviously, you know, um, style is such a big part of your life and your career. And you have that very cool British style thing nailed, which we're all very proud of. Um, where do you love to shop? And I would like to know if there's any kind of like emerging designers who are on your radar that you might want to kind of flag. Um, I like to shop everywhere. I think we've, we're really lucky in Britain. We've got the best high street going. I mean, literally, you walk out of the studio and there's just some inc like great shops. Um, I like, you know, like River Island and Oasis, Marks and Spencer. I love, I love our kind of British high street. It's great. Um, I've done quite a lot of online shopping recently. Mm -hmm. Millennial, you know. Um, uh, I, I really like a brand called Rouge, which is um, by this girl called Jeanne Damas, who is a, a French lady, and she makes really incredible clothes. Um, there's an Australian brand that I like called Posse, P-O-S-S-E, and they make mm -hmm. really lovely clothes as well. Um, Stoud, which is... Um, 
an, an American brand. I've not named any British brands that I've bought from recently. <laughs> Go with the high street. M&S. Yes. M&S, I love M&S. <laughs> I love M&S. Um, yeah, so I've kind of been doing quite a lot of like on, online shopping. Reformation, which is an, an American brand. But the only thing is with that, you can't try it on beforehand. So you get it posted to you and then you're like, if it doesn't fit, you've got to post it back. <laughs> and it's so annoying, isn't it? Going to the post office to, to, to take stuff back. And ASOS is brilliant. I love ASOS. That's great as well. They have killed it. They have, haven't they? Mm -hmm. But you can lose hours on ASOS, like on what's new, and you're like, oh, God, and, I want to buy that. The money. And the shopping, <laughs> shopping basket's full, and you're like, okay, I'll just get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Cool, so I think we are going to go to the audience for some questions now. Has anyone got the first question for Laura? Let's go. Um, hi. Hello. Who, who in the whole world would you most likely like to see as a guest judge on Bake Off? Oh, good question. I think Laura Jackson and Alice Levine would be great. <laughs> From Jackson and Levine, I think that would be the person that I would love to see the most. Thanks. And who's our second question? Hi, uh, this one's from Twitter. Uh, Bella loves you on Take Me Out the Gossip, but what's been your biggest first date disaster? Oh, I once got taken to, wait for it, Go the on. IKEA cafe. Yeah. <laughs> On a first sounds quite good. The meatballs. Yeah. Well, I didn't have meatballs. I had a hot dog. <laughs> I also had braces on the top and the bottom of my teeth. And I still had bread there a month after the date. It was awful. Um, uh, yeah, so rule number one, don't take anybody to the Ikea cafe on a first date. Rule number two, don't eat bread when you've got braces. <laughs> and our third question. Oh, hi. Um, who would be your dream dinner guests um mm, probably david attenborough oh yeah because i reckon he's got the most like uh, like mm. amazing stories about all over the world and you could just quiz him on anything although alice did interview him once and he mm. and she said to him what's your favorite animal and he said a baby he said they're the most fascinating little things I was quite shocked by that. A baby person? Like a baby. Oh. Yeah, that's what I said to Alex. I was like, <laughs> you know, like a, a human baby said, yeah, a human baby there. Oh. Yeah. He was very inspired by the human baby. That's a fact you can all take home with you. That's good insight. <laughs> at least I wouldn't have to ask him that question at the dinner party because I know the answer. <laughs> Cool. Well, sadly, I think that's all that we've got time for today. But thank you so much to Laura for joining us. Round to Ours is out right now. So go and get yourselves a copy for some brilliant entertaining. And let's give it up to Laura for joining us today. Woo!